Hey everyone, this is Bill Jellin. I've been evaluating Topaz Studio 2 this week and it's pretty cool. I thought I'd do a little uh, walkthrough here. I posted a photo on Facebook this morning that I created uh, with the studio and uh, a lot of reactions, actually more reactions to this than the original photo uh, from the launch uh, a few weeks ago. So let's just walk through uh, uh, some of the tools here. I'll open a file. Uh, this is uh, a JPEG. Now, right now, uh, this is early in this product uh, release uh, and in fact you want to come up here and go to help and the change log and take a look. So right now I'm using version 2.0.5 and they've been putting out an update almost every day. Uh, so if you're trying this you're going to see some things that are different than, than what I'm trying. Uh, but let's just walk through uh, some of the tools we have. And you know I watched uh, some of their tutorials and they always start here with uh, add look, which is a collection of presets, but I, I found after playing with this for a while um, that I really like building my own, just going through add filter, and the first one to start with all the time is uh, artificial intelligence clear, and you always wait for that blue line to go all the way across, it tells you that it's done, all right, and you know, this, these are some things that we would normally do in Lightroom, and you might have noticed that I started with a JPEG today, uh, it can import raw, but currently, this version right now, can't do any cropping and so uh, I still included Lightroom in this because Lightroom was allowed me to pull in that um, raw file and then uh, crop it uh, the way that I wanted to crop so uh, I'm looking forward to the day when we can crop here and we can just bring the the uh, raw file directly in all right so AI clear is our uh, first layer on top of CRS 18 uh, and I'm just going to accept all the settings down here and for everything that we choose, all of these different filters that you can add, uh, there are a whole bunch of different settings that you'll want to experiment with down here uh, and this X doesn't remove it, it actually just um, closes the panel right? and if you want to remove it first you can, before you click delete, uh, you can turn it off and on, boy and really minor changes there, you'd have to zoom in uh, right on the rocket to see what those changes look like Right, but it does make it a little bit sharper, uh, so we'll keep that one. All right, next up, uh, some other things that we always do in Lightroom. We go to Dehaze, a relatively new filter in Lightroom, and I want to bump this up. Dehaze, you know, makes everything really blue, and that water it might just be too blue. So, as far as strength, just getting enough so that way the rocket becomes clear, uh, the exhaust plume becomes clear, but the the water isn't. Uh, too, too blue, uh, in my opinion. And then another pretty standard filter, and I was not a user of the Topaz Studio One, um, so I understand that this was a separate product. I used the Topaz products a lot to create uh, paintings from photographs, and that's built right into this. Uh, I, from what I can see, uh, $99 price for all of this, uh, $79 is the intro, and there's lots of coupons out there for 15% off. Uh, you know, when I compare what I'm paying Adobe for Lightroom and InDesign and everything, you know, this is this is one one and a half months of uh, subscription to Adobe uh, and we get all of this all of this stuff. So we're going to Precision Contrast and you can change the contrast for Micro, Low, Medium and High and I always want to increase the the contrast here for the the ice crystals coming off the rocket uh, so that's Micro, bump that up a little bit and low. If you're not sure what's what's happening, just take one of these and drag it all the way and see the complete effect. And that makes those clouds look really weird and over-processed. Or drag it all the way to the left and you can see what the difference are. It's funny, I actually like this one right there. And the beautiful thing about this is, you know, you're not hurting anything. You can just uh, drag it until you get a, a look that you like and I'll leave high exactly what it is. Alright, so so far the AI Clear, Dehaze, and precision contrast all fairly similar standard kind of things that we would have done uh, in Lightroom and to zoom in or zoom out it's just a scroll wheel on your mouse I'm using Windows I'm sure that uh, must be similar on the Mac all right but let's move now into uh, kind of the um, artistic realm the things that you're not going to see in Lightroom and the first thing here uh, you know the rocket here rule of thirds is on is you know at the right third we have all of this space out here and I want to kind of jazz this up a little bit, this, this empty space out here. So we go to Add Filter, 
scroll down into the stylistic and texture and it is amazing how many textures there are here just uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of them I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom I was playing with this yesterday and I happened to encounter this one uh, which has a nice space theme right so you get that uh, you know, the, the, the galaxies probably I don't know from the Hubble telescope or something like that uh, and I like how that looks up there in that top left hand corner but I don't like how it looks over the whole picture I don't want to have that over the rocket so we're going to use masking in a moment uh, to take care of that but let's take a look at what else is here uh, we can change uh, the saturation of this change the colors right kind of bring out the uh, colors up there in the top left hand corner uh, you can play with the brightness too bright or the other way too dark so it's probably good exactly where it was and then I I love how much stuff is hidden in here so right now uh, you know this this cloud is in the top left hand corner but I could flip this horizontal and move that cloud to the top right hand corner I'll go back to where it was or flip vertical and move it to the bottom corner uh, so just you know a lot of different things you can do and this great little drop down here uh, will change the look completely so there's vivid light linear light, hard light, all right, and I actually went through all of these and in fact this one in my opinion I like the regular normal um, the best, that's the one that, that looks great to me, all right, so I love this look in the top left hand corner here, uh, adjusted some of these sliders down here to, to give me the, the best color that I'm looking for, but now I need that to happen just in the corner and not over the rocket and that's where we use the mask tools, the mask tools, so we're going to add a mask to this layer and there are six different mask tools here. I'm going to use the gradient today. Um, there is a brush mask, which is similar to what you might do in Photoshop. I have to tell you, I haven't done a lot of, I haven't had a, a lot of luck with these. I saw these in the tutorial, uh, but they're not working for me. All right, so I'm going to use gradient. And what we have is green means the mask is happening on this side. Red means the mask is not happening on that side. So what I need is I need the green to be kind of up here in the top left hand corner. It's beautiful. We can just click on that handle and rotate around like that. All right, so you can see that the, um, the the cloud appears in the top left, but not over the rocket. The rocket is still perfect. And it's interesting, there's a little pink star right here, and I love to try and get that pink star uh, to come out. So just kind of uh, drag this down. If I need it to be a little bit narrower, I can make it narrower. So that gets me that pink star, but it doesn't really interfere uh, with the rocket or that main plume right up there that is lit by the rocket. All right, and the way that the mask work, it started out as all white. Whatever is white, the uh, effect shows through. Whatever is black, uh, it does not. And as you make this wider, that edge becomes a little bit softer. All right, so it's uh, plenty of things you can do with that. All right, now uh, this is one. You know, just being someone who just dove right in, I said, all right, well, what if I want to go back and change the colors of these now? And I couldn't figure out any way to get the, the colors back. And the whole key to this, uh, well, the first thing I did was I clicked away and clicked back, and and that brought my settings back. Uh, but it turns out you don't have to do that. You can switch back and forth uh, by clicking on the mask, you get to the mask settings, or by clicking on the word texture, you get back to the texture settings. All right, so that wasn't obvious to me at first. Um, but in general, uh, once I got the hang of that, I could now go back and forth between the mask and the colors and uh, you know, try and adjust uh, everything so it, it looks great to me. All right, so that's our first artistic thing we can do. And the other thing, and this is something I've been using Topaz Labs for uh, for the whole time, is to change the photograph into something that looks like a painting. All right, so we're going to uh, come up here to Add Filter and down in the bottom something called abstraction like abstract art or impression two different tools let's take a look all right so so with abstract let's take the uh, simplify size and drag it up to 0.33 uh, feature boost just a tiny bit up to 0.03 uh, detail strength I'm going to drag that across and I'm kind of watching these little lightning arresting the lightning towers over here on the right hand side to see how how those look and at some point I kind of get a nice little reflection, a little bit of pink shows up there uh, at the base of the lightning towers. And again, you know, I'm trying to get it to look uh, like it's been painted, uh, 
but still you know have some some details there and of course I could have come in and applied a preset uh, like that all right so um, you know that that's one way to go let's let's say this isn't what I want and so I'm going to click uh, delete this layer on abstraction that's the beautiful thing about this it doesn't hurt the photo at all you can uh, change your mind and come in here and try impression all right an impression this feels a lot more uh, like the topaz impression that I've used before where you can choose the brush stroke number of strokes the brush size and again just try it all the way to the right oh that's horrible all the way to the left no so somewhere in the middle and all of these other settings here now one quick option to do this is to apply all of these with a preset so if I'm looking for an oil painting or an oil pastel or a perfect pastel all right so let's go with that that kind of gives me the detail that I want in the, the lightning towers uh, makes the, the rocket and the clouds look very artsy but I don't want to apply those settings up here to the the texture all right so what I actually want to do is I want to create a the absolute opposite of what we had on texture so I love this feature here I come into texture and click on the icon these three little dots here there's a menu and I'm going to copy uh, this mask and then come back to impression and click mask like that and I will paste all right, which applies the painting up here only the left hand corner but then use the three dots and say that I want to invert invert says that we're going to apply the painting over here and then up here is the texture uh, like that all right so uh, at this point uh, this is basically what I had that I posted out there on Facebook this morning uh, cool uh, cool and I'm happy with this all right so a couple of things first off to save this project file save project as this was CRS 18 launch Right, so now I can come back and adjust these textures again but for posting to Facebook uh, we actually want to do a file and then export all right and choose uh, you know, where you want everything to go uh, the quality of the uh, JPEG and you can also save it as a TIFF or a ping so I'll export like that and the other thing when I originally did this I I did all of these settings to a version of the photograph that was watermarked it had our we report space watermark in the lower right hand corner I'm like oh, yeah that watermark really looks bad I should have started with one that didn't have the watermark so uh, once I had all six of these set up the way that I wanted them I said I'm gonna save a look uh, and so I created my um, I'll call it the nebula top left look this is uh, both a painting on right, nebula on left. Click OK. All right, so that saves all of those settings. So the next time that I came in and I had a photograph, uh, let me open an image here. And I'll go to the one that does have the watermark right there the watermark to apply all of those things I just did I said oh this is gonna be easy I'm gonna add a look and I want to use the look category of my looks it starts out here with all I'm going to my looks those are the ones that I've saved and so nebula top left click apply and all of my settings come in uh, but it looks horrible what's up with this uh, the deal is it doesn't remember the uh, mask right so because it's a different photo you, you're gonna have to mask it again that's not a big deal uh, just be prepared for that so we'll click on the mask again uh, go into the, the gradient mask again spin this around so greens on the top left come down here to get that little pink showing up all right and now that we have that copy that mask click apply come up here to impression click on the mask and two things we're going to do a paste and then an invert and now that I have this set up super quick to come back into another photograph and apply the same settings uh, I'm really impressed you see that I'm still here uh, 24 days left in the trial um, but there's a lot of tools here and it creates you know it, it takes a, a photograph that was uh, uh, 
a photograph that I loved. This is shot from the roof of the Vehicle Assembly Building in Cape Canaveral, uh, Kennedy Space Center. You know, great photo, but you know, it, it just becomes another rocket photo at some point. So this is a great way uh, to dress it up. The Topaz Studio Tool uh, set of tools. Uh, you know, actually, I spent some time yesterday uh, with another photograph, just going through, uh, adding one filter after another, and then deleting it. You know, dragging all the sliders all the way to the right, all the way to the left. Uh, seeing what kind of things are there. So there are, is a ton of different features here. Uh, really cool product. Uh, highly recommended. Well, hey, thanks for watching. I'm Bill Jellin from We Report Space.